Good morning, everyone, and welcome. We're so glad you could join us today. Today, we're beginning a four-week journey on the work by Don Miguel Ruiz, based on his book, The Four Agreements. These agreements are very simple, yet very powerful. And when practiced, they move us along the path to peace. And even though we've looked at these before, they're so well worth revisiting because each time we hear them, we pick up something new or remember something we might have forgotten. Also, attending all four of these services will complete one of the requirements for anyone who wishes to become a voting member of Unity Spiritual Center. And that's for anyone who joins us live or anyone who joins us virtually. Now, the four agreements are based on the ancient Toltec teachings and on the idea that when we were young, we were taught certain things that we had no control over, like what language we learned, what religion we practiced. We learned what behaviors were considered good, what behaviors were considered bad, and we were rewarded and punished accordingly. As we processed all of this, we made agreements with ourselves about how we should behave. We learned the rules of the world that we lived in and formulated ideas about what would bring us love and approval and what wouldn't. So things like if we were beautiful enough, we would be loved. If we were smart enough, we would be loved. If we didn't cry or didn't show emotion, we would be loved. If we were a star athlete, we would be loved. I'm sure there are some that you can still remember from your childhood that you thought if you did, it was a guarantee for being loved. Whenever we hear an opinion and, a, and believe it, we make an agreement with it and it becomes part of our belief system. So if we bought into any of those things I just mentioned, we created it as part of our belief system, we agreed with it. Now, somewhere someone told us through their word that we were not enough and we agreed with it. We ended up judging ourselves and judging others in search for our perfection. The agreement and the power of our agreement is so strong that even if we understand the concept of it not being true, we still feel the blame, the guilt, and the shame that occurs if we go against to go, these old rules, these old beliefs. In the book, The Diamond Cutter, Josh Michael Ro Roach uncovers the fact that in Tibet, they don't even have a word for guilt. He says, there's no word in Tibetan for guilty. The closest thing is intelligent regret that decides to do things differently. He also describes blame, criticism, complaining, etc., as useless talk. It depletes us of our energy and wires our brains in ways that we don't want them to be wired. A study at the Cleveland Clinic shows that each person has on average 60,000 thoughts a day. That's one thought per second in every waking hour. Amazingly, 95% are the same thoughts repeated every day. On average, 80% of those habitual thoughts are negative. 80%. That's astounding. Now, this negativity served us well. In fact, it was critical for our survival when we were foraging for food centuries ago, paying close attention to anything that might place us in danger, like a saber-toothed tiger, tiger. But it doesn't serve us now. So how do we find freedom from all of this? How do we create a new dream for ourselves? Well, the author states, if we can see it, if we can see it as our agreements which rule our life and we don't like the dream of our life, we need to change our agreements. When we are finally ready to change our agree agreements, there are four very powerful agreements that will help us break those agreements that come from fear and deplete our energy. Each time you break an agreement, 
all the power you use to create it returns to you. If you adopt these four agreements, they will create enough personal power for you to change the entire system of your old agreements. So today we begin with the first agreement, and that is be impeccable with your word, which the author says is the most important one. The word impeccable comes from the Latin word peccatus, which means sin. And im means without. So impeccable means without sin. Religions speak of sin and sinners, but in truth, the sin is anything that we do that goes against ourselves or another. Ruiz says, when you are impeccable, you take responsibility for your actions, but you do not judge or blame yourself. And that's really important. You're accountable. You take responsible, but you cut out that judgment and that blame. And when we learn to not blame ourselves, we learn to not blame others. He says, speak with integrity. Say only what you mean. Avoid using the word to speak against yourself or to gossip about others. Being impeccable with your word is much more than being honest. It's more like be thoughtful about your speech. Use your speech to build love and community rather than to tear it down. Don't gossip and don't speak negatively about yourself. So being impeccable with our word begins with ourselves. We all have a lot, a lot of negative self-talk that goes on. But that which we use against ourselves, we will also inevitably use against others. So we have to begin with ourselves. Yes, we make mistakes. But then we need to take responsibility for our words and actions without judging or blaming ourselves. We learn from it. We grow from it. We move on. Being impeccable with our words means using our energy in the direction of truth and love for others. We know from our third unity principle that we are co-creators. And I don't think we fully realize the power that words have to create. The word is not just a sound or a written symbol. The word is a force, an energy. It's the power we have to express and to communicate, to think, and thereby create events in our lives. Ruiz says no other creature has the power we do in this way. The word is the most powerful tool you have as a human. It's a tool of magic. Now Ruiz uses the term magic, but I like to prefer, I prefer to use the word mystic. I equate magical as being external, aligned with our ego thought. But mystical thought is internal. It's spiritual thought. It's aligned with truth principle. We've all seen what our words can do. They can lift up people or they can tear them down. So being impeccable or without sin with our word is about the correct use of our energy. It's using our energy in the direction of truth and love for ourselves and others. It's about raising our energy. And as Rumi says it perfectly, he says, raise your words, not your voice. It is the rain that grows flowers, not thunder. And I love that. So our words are like plant seeds. And it's the rain that nurtures those seeds and grows flowers. So we want to grow flowers, not thunder. Ruiz says we cast spells and use black magic when we equate with the ego mind because the only part of us that can be hurtful or damaging is our ego. When we look at everyday human interactions, imagine how many times people cast spells on each other with their word. Ruiz says that over time, this interaction becomes the worst kind of black magic, which is pure poison. 
We learned how to gossip by agreement. When we were children, we heard the adults around us gossiping openly, giving their opinions about other people. We learned this as a normal way to communicate. But gossip can be compared to a computer virus. A computer virus is a piece of computer language written in the same language all the others are written in, but with harmful intent. The code is inserted into the program of your computer when you least expect it, and most of the time without being aware of it. After this code has in, been introduced, your computer doesn't work quite right or doesn't work at all. The same holds true for us. Often we hear someone say something. They're angry with a person or that person triggers something within them and they say something like, this teacher isn't good or this person isn't good. We are immediately imprinted with those words and the emotional code that the person had within them when they said it. We're not aware of this. And we're not aware of their motivation for telling us. They could have failed a class with that teacher or that person remind them of an angry parent. parent. Who knows? They, just, they might just be passing along what someone else told them based in fear and judgment. What happens is that we believe it. And then we see those others through the lens of the gossiper. We are always building our world with our words. Being impeccable or without sin is about building ourselves up with our words, supporting others, sharing love, radiating positive thoughts and feelings. It's using our word in the direction of truth and the energy of love. When we use our word to support another person, to share love, positive thoughts, feelings, whatever, we are actually loving ourselves and extending that love to another. And when we use our word against another, it's a projection of what we do not love about ourselves because we cannot see in another what we do not possess in ourselves. So we can only use a word against another by actually seeing it within ourselves. And remember, there is only one. There is only the one. I always say, if each person truly knew that there was only one of which we were all part of, they could never raise their voice or their hand to harm another. The Buddha said, whatever words we utter should be chosen with great care, for people will hear them and be influenced by them for good or ill. So I ask you now, what influence do you want your words to have? Will they influence good? Or will they influence what is not good? You see, when you make an agreement with yourself to be impeccable with your word and follow through with it, just that intention changes you at your depth. When we move in that direction, truth manifests through us and transforms the emotional toxins that exist within us. Mother Teresa said, words, words which do not bring light will increase the darkness. So being impeccable with our words not only supports ourselves, but supports everyone and everything because we contribute to, towards raising our consciousness and br brightening the light which exists in all of us. Buddha said, being deeply learned and skilled, being well-trained and using well-spoken words, this is good luck. And I say it's more than luck. It's consciously adding to the good of all. Now, Don Miguel Ruiz also states when he's talking about gossip, he says, your opinion is nothing but your point of view. It is not necessarily true. 
Your opinion comes from your beliefs, your own ego, your own dream. We create all this poison and spread it to others just so we can feel right about ourselves, about our own point of view. If we adopt the first agreement and become impeccable with our word, any emotional poison will eventually be cleaned and cleansed from our mind and from our communications. Impeccability of the world will also give you immunity from anyone putting a negative spell on you. You will receive only a negative idea if your mind is fertile ground for that idea. When you become impeccable with your word, your mind is no longer fertile ground for words that come from black magic. Instead, it is fertile for the words that come from love. You can measure the impeccability of your world, of your word by your level of self-love. How much you love yourself and how you feel about yourself is directly proportionate to the quality and integrity of your word. When you are impeccable with your word, you feel good, joyful, and at peace. You can transcend the dream of hell just by making the agreement to be impeccable with your word. Right now, I'm planting that seed in your mind. Whether or not that seed grows depends upon how fertile your mind is for the seeds of love. It's up to you to make this agreement with yourself. Say it. I am impeccable with my word. Now repeat it again with me. I am impeccable with my word. I am impeccable with my word. Begin with yourself. Tell yourself each day how much you love yourself, how great you are how wonderful you are, how powerful you are. And speak only words of love to yourself. I am an expression of God manifest in the world. Amen. So now I invite you to get comfortable in your seats as we move into meditation. Just allow yourselves to put your feet flat on the floor. Put your arms comfortably and your hands comfortably on your lap. Allow yourself to just breathe deeply. And with each breath you take, you feel more and more relaxed. Each inhalation soothes every part of your body and every exhalation releases any stress or strains that you are currently experiencing. You feel the breath. Relax every muscle in your body. And you breathe at a comfortable pace for you. I am impeccable with my word. And with this thought, I create a new mind. I create a new mind, which is like cultivating a garden. The manifestations I produce from this garden of my mind will be just like crops from the earth's soil. So I am impeccable with my word and I tend the garden of my mind well. I am ever conscious of my thoughts and of my spoken word. I am impeccable with my word. I use the word in the correct way, aligned with spirit, aligned with truth. I use my word to produce only good and share my love, that love which is who I inherently am. I am impeccable with my word and I teach only love. 
And now I allow myself to go deeper and deeper into the silence. And I just listen. And now I invite you to bring to mind anyone who may be in need of prayer. Those in our unity community, those on silent unity. And we extend this to the wider circle of the world. We know and affirm that there is a power and presence within us, within all people, that will see them through any difficulty they are currently experiencing. We know that everything we encounter is there to serve us. Regardless of how difficult it is, we know that we will get through it and we will learn from it. Because that power and that presence ever present within us guides us at every moment of the day. We are so blessed to have this awareness and so grateful Amen. So again, thank you so much for joining us today, whether you're watching on Zoom, the live stream, or um, at a later time through YouTube or our website. We're so grateful that you could be with us today. And those of us watching the live stream, please feel free to comment, share your feelings or your thoughts about this, because we really look forward to interacting with you. Thanks again.